All right. Happy Canada Day to all my Canadian friends. Just got back from a little uh, camping this weekend. Did some solid drinking. Had some fun, good times hanging out with my friends. <clears throat> Sat down on my computer, fart around, check out some stuff on TTS. And uh, I remembered that there was something that I wanted to do when I saw this table. I was kind of like going through my stuff and I'm like, this D&D table number eight, I haven't got rid of. And this is a great table. You know, it's already sort of set up and ready to go, so you don't have to fart around building anything. Um, you could actually get rid of these wooden lampposts. I really dislike it when people leave the names on things, so I would just, you know, delete them out so that you don't have to look at them. I don't know why there's a gazillion freaking lamps there anyway. Oh, I see, because they're on the ground, right? Okay, cool. So they're there because of whatever the... The look of the the map let's reload this table now i never just use straight tables so what i want to do is i want to import this table into a one world map where i can take it and just drop it into you know uh, it'll it'll become ultimately useful if i can put it into a bag that i can add to it like a collection uh, you'll see on here in my saved objects map locations i have just five pages of what is there 20 per page so you're looking at 80 95 maps i've got so far different maps that i've collected and scooped up over time so what i want to show you is how you get this table into like a one world setting and how you do things like this is obviously missing an image so let's start with this first and try and fix this if you right click on this and go to custom You'll see here it says diffuse image, diffuse slash image. So what this means is this is where the image for this thing is hosted. So if you just click on the on the, the link, you can hit control and copy, control C. And then I'll shoot over to my right monitor and you'll see that it's it's over here. Let's close these things down. We are going to go here, control, no, we'll open up a new page. So there you can see it is in photo bucket. It has this weird tag on it, but this is the image. This is what's supposed to go over top of this thing. Now what you want to do is you can just right click on this and you can hit save image as, and you'll see that I've got a couple copies of it in my downloads directory. And when I go to my downloads directory and I move my downloads over here, you're going to see that uh, among my other stuff, I have those images there's three of them one two and three so we don't need these ones shift delete let's get rid of them this is it here now what i would do is i would take this image and i would upload it to an album on my imgur account if i go to my imgur account uh these are all the different storage places for imgur or for images that i have different things that i've been making and cutting out stuff that i want to drag in this is a really nice file folder system that you can have for free and uh, so this Honeyhorn Brewery would for example would be all the cutouts for all the maps that I did on the the Honeyhorn Brewery map right there it is all there so and then I just drag those pieces in create tokens it's pretty straightforward but it's a great way to store stuff much better than the options that you have in game so what I do is I have a folder here called miscellaneous random and then you can see that I have a bunch of, I've done this multiple times trying to find or correct the screwed up images where things get overlaid. And here it is here. So essentially all I've done is taken the image from my downloads and I've dragged it into my folder like so. It creates a duplicate. And then uh, I'm gonna delete this one, delete image from account. And then all you do is just right click and hit copy image address. Then you come back to your Gimpster, or sorry, your tabletop simulator, and in diffuse image here, you just click again and hit control V, and then import. Now right away, that's been fixed. It Now it's what it's gonna do is it's gonna call on the image from uh, my specific um, Imgur account. Get rid of this bridge thing because we don't need that there. Anytime you see a name pop up, you want to get rid of it. 
So now that the map is generally fixed, we want to get rid of these wooden lamppost things, but I'll do this later because you don't need to sit here and watch me do this. Or you can, well, I just tell you like completely, oops, I screwed that up. Um, so we'll have to unlock this, hit control C, click on this thing and control V, drop another one. Roughly there somewhere, lock it in place, lock it in place. I accidentally. All right, well, let's let's get past this stuff because this is just dumb. So what I got to do now is I have under my games and my workshop, I have saved one world. It's right here. So you can click on this thing and you can just hit expand and then you can see what is in the side the one world table without actually opening it up. What you're going to need to do is you're going to need to crack out uh, this hub and these two bases, W base and U base. And then these are the only two pieces that you need. So I would take these, let's spin this little thing around, drop this here, and I'm gonna smash this button and it's gonna pop up and say that it's missing a zone object bag, so it, it creates it. Right click on the bag and just call this whatever you want. So we're gonna call it test. And then we press the button again, it creates another bag, we're going to right click on that and we're also going to call it test there so we have two bags both called test now when you press this button it initializes it if it needs an update it'll tell you there'll be a button that appears here and then you lock it and now you notice that this map is gone so you are going to have to find oh check that out there's a weird looking little green thing right there curious to know what that is but you're going to have to find this map. So in order to find this map, you got to do another thing, which is basically go back to, uh, let's go back to my right monitor where I'm going to open up uh, my file explorer and we're going to go into my documents. And then under my documents, you are going to find my games, tabletop simulator, and I believe under mods and images. Everything gets saved here, which is kind of slick. So you essentially just, this might take a few seconds for it to go through and load everything. But what you do is you just sort by date. We have to let this load all the files while that's doing that. I'm gonna take a drink. This shouldn't take too long. But Tabletop Simulator, every time you load up an item or an object or something, it saves it in a mod caching file and this is where you find it. So that tabletop map should be in here somewhere. And if we sort by date, because this would be like the last thing that you loaded up, it should be right near the top. Now I've probably got thousands of files in here, so you know I don't know where it's going to appear and we're just gonna wait for it to do its thing here for half a second. Maybe I'll get lucky and scroll down a little bit and we'll find it somewhere. There, it's done. If I scroll back up to the top, uh, look what I found. This is it right here. So I'm going to take this map, right click, and I'm going to open with GIMP. My GIMP window will appear over here. Let me just move it here. I prefer using GIMP because it's free and you know, everything on it seems to work well enough that I don't uh, I don't need to pay for Photoshop or any of that kind of stuff. So this is a great program for doing this. You're going to go to Image, and then you are going to go to Scale Image. You want the entire thing scaled. So you want this thing scaled, and it already is, to 1600 by 945. Scaled, you hit Scale, and then you just file export it wherever you want it to go to. And close down GIMP. And then you would find it under your, like, so let's say you saved it to your downloads directory, which I clearly did not. Then you go back to your Imgur account. I think I have a 1600 by 945 tables. Let's see if I already was smart enough to drop this in my tables. Probably pretty sure that I didn't do it already so that, it, no, I did. Right. So essentially you would just take the file, resize it, like I said, 1600 by 945, 
There it is there. I must have called it yikes for whatever reason. And you take it and you drag it onto your imgur file. And this is this is just my maps, like my flat maps have to be 1600 or double so that they fit perfectly onto the table. Then it's as simple as doing this. You just right click and hit copy image address. This is the image that I want. We go back to our GIMP table, or our, sorry, our TTS table. Then we're back to One World. Now from One World, you're gonna expand this. We're gonna create a new table. So this says name of zone. So we're gonna right click on this and we are gonna call this uh, D and D, let's put it in caps, D and D 008. And then under custom, where this image is, we're going to control V and paste in the image from our Imgur account You can see that it's coming into the game. And then you pick this up and you drop it onto pack in the base. Once it's done, you'll see that the map just reappeared in the table. We're going to scooch up here once it pops in. And now it totally looks like it's not where it's supposed to be. So that's all right because this has the added ability of these two little corner pieces that are going to allow you to change the way the map sits. So I think if we just click both of them, come on, sucker, where's the button? There it is. I think if I turn it like that, usually it just needs to be like flipped and reversed. There you go. See, it's right back to where she needs to be. So now that that's done, you can just hit this button right here and pack and then you just look at the table and I'm you, all you're doing is looking for stuff like leftovers. So there's no leftover bits or leftover any things that need to be moved around. So we can come back here and I can go to this D&D &D table and I'll hit build. Scratch my finger while it builds the table. And in a matter of seconds, there, finish building. Now what you can do is you come back over here and you hit export. And then here you have it. 310 pieces of love. The bag is called D&D 008. So I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to go to uh, save object. And I want to save this in my map locations and hit save. Okay. So that's it. This one actually worked out relatively easy. There was only one thing to find. I showed you guys how to get this bottom map so you can pull it off. You just sort of edit and, and edit it and GIMP and away you go. Now if I go to games and uh, let's go to my work table here and I'll hit load my work table up. It comes up loading complete. Just a couple of things that I like to screw around with here and we're going to smash this button twice. Lock the table going to go to saved objects and we're going to type in 008. We take this and drop it on the table and then move it out of the way. Actually with this with this empty and the table fired up, you just want to drag it on here and it's going to import the art. Once that is done, we're going to go to this main This is like all the maps that I've been working on. So I'm going to take D&D table number eight, drop the link down here and check this out. Double click on it. There's the map already positioned. And I'll just hit build. Give it a second to fire up and there it is. I've completely like pulled it out of that other table, thrown it into a bag. And now when I'm building my adventures, I know that I have this map available. And what I would do, for example, is just like I have down here, like I set my scenarios up um, from this blue sword desert. This would be like the parent view map. The best way to do is go watch the flight of the red sword with the different rooms and stuff like that. But what I would do is when I create my maps, if I go to, um, I have got a ICRPG for King and Country workshop table. Let's load this up. 
This is an adventure that I built. You can also see this on the... Um, it's also available if you follow me. So if I go to Murder Hobo over here and I change my color to black, you see my table pop up so you can see everything. Smash my button, smash my button. Load up the main table, which is my ICRPG table deal. And then, yeah, this is what I would do. I would just start creating my adventures. So here's this, here's Alfheim. We're going to build this. I start telling my story. And then I put all my links on for my maps and stuff like that. These people start on this slaver ship and they're on their way to the city of Norberg. They're actually going to this Norberg prison war camp and stuff like that. So I'm telling my story. And then uh, the next map would be this one here. You can see the button, which is the slaver's boat. So then I would build the slaver's boat. And this is how you put an adventure together inside of one world. Why I think it's so fantastic, because you don't have to, uh, you could pre-build everything. So here's, here's my slaver's boat that I built. I, I've got some tentacles on here just for, you know, basically like shits and giggles. If you're not interested in these things, you could just essentially get rid of them, which is just, you know, a delete and a delete if they're not part of your story. But here's a, like a little Kraken guy that could attack the boat. Um, delete, delete, delete. And then also inside the ship, if I hit uh, F8 and I just slide the top of the ship off, you can see inside the, inside the boat, you've got a couple of slave guys. You, you just throw in down here a couple of, uh, you put your PCs down here. Drop them in, and these slave guys are in here. These uh, tentacles attack the boat. Yeah, whatever you want to have kind of a thing, right? Essentially, this boat is going to sink, and they're going to end up in a different place. Uh, here's Admiral Jackson. This should have been locked up in place, but for some reason it wasn't. That's cool. If anything goes wrong with the table, it is as simple as hit and clear and hit and build. And then it just rebuilds the table. This piece here will be a bit of a screwy thing because it was off the table when it needed to be built. So we're going to clear the table and we're gonna build it again. <laughs> bada bing, bada boom, resets the table, puts everything back to where it's supposed to be. Now this guy should have been locked and then I got to resave the table, but you get the gist of it. So that's actually kind of slick. So again, we go back here. Um, because I reloaded that table, or even if I wanted to do it from here, let's say uh, I'm going to hit clear, clear this one, and inside this game now, I want to add that map. I'm like, these guys are going to do a dungeon adventure somewhere inside here. So I'm like, okay, I need this map. I'm going to drop this on this deal right here. Uh, let's say we put this off to the side right now. Oh, and it doesn't matter because I just need the link. So I'm going to clear this back out. I'm going to take this D&D number eight, drop it on here. It's going to load it into this table and drop me this little link. And then all I got to do is just look through these things. Here's the Alfheim map. Where does this take me? Back to the mainframe. So here's the Norberg city gates. We're going to go into the merchant district and then from the merchant district into the city streets so let's build the city streets map and i'm like okay so this this dungeon map is going to be in the sewers here there's little sewer grates you can see there's one right there right so your story would consist of them uh popping through this thing so what i'm going to do then is i'm going to take this D, &D 8 and i'm going to drop it on my map right about where that sewer is like right right there and then now you're good to go, right? So my players can go to the deep sewers. Uh, they can go up to the long house or now I've added this extra under little sewer hidden cave area. Double click on this and build and boom, just like that. I've expanded my story to have an underground hidden sewers cave area that my players can go and explore. Maybe there's a thieves guild down here that's hidden in this underground cave complex. Yeah, whatever you want to put, right? But that's the advantage of adding these maps to One World. One World just lets you, you know, put anything in any combination. Uh, it instantaneously builds the map. Unlike the other table, so I'm not going to save this so I can just show you what I'm talking about right now, but this is the beauty of it. Like I can load all of these different maps inside of one world. I don't have any exterior links, so we're going to have to go back to the city streets. 
but I can load all of these maps and build the city streets again. It's a beautiful map by Zovia that I just tossed some houses on and put some cool stuff. I can't share this one because this is Zovia's property. This is just for my personal players, but I got a bit of snow. I got some rooftops, city guards on the main streets and stuff. So if your players want to like sneak over the top, uh, maybe you want to make it like nighttime. Oh, I don't have the bar on this one. Uh, smoke coming out of the chimneys kind of a thing. There's an outhouse, etc., etc. But uh, yeah, that's the beauty of it. Without changing my player character sheets, a little ICRPG character sheet, I can change the maps without messing with the tables, right? Say I want to go to Norberg Longhouse. Just the map changes, not the entire room which is kind of the crappy part about doing this, which is if I go here and go to workshops, when you go to D&D table eight and you want to load it, I'm sure there's, there's a way of doing this, but now all the stuff is gone. So you would actually have to just sort of go to, oh, I don't know, let's say you build your own room or something like mine would be Sunday one shot. Let's load this up. And then if I go to objects, and I go to here, I think you can basically go this route here, options, and you can go additive load. And then this will load this into the table, but look at the problems that happen. Now I gotta change the table art, objects, let's see if I can get this to work. Um, let's go to expand, here's all the custom models table custom no see because that doesn't allow me to oh there it did do it that's what you want to do now kind of a pain in the ass this thing's all screwed up so you'd have to correct it and make sure that thing's same it's just ugh, not my cup of tea one world is top notch but anyways that's how you like do things like reclaim these images because sometimes they'll be screwed up and whatnot. I'm pretty sure under my workshop. And then if you find cool tables, you can always do things like just basically steal everything. Probably going to do the same thing for these other maps that I haven't done yet. I actually did... Oh, somebody's already done it, which is very cool. Has created this map. Games. So you just would copy this and drop it into your deal. All right, well, that's enough for today. You, you get the gist of how to do things, which is actually pretty slick. That's how you get stuff into one world, um, changing the image size and correcting any sort of issues on the map. Hopefully that helps some people uh, learn a few things. I'll make this map available on my table that you can also find by looking up the Murder Hobo Show stuff in, where's my table? Generic table, one shot. Where'd you go to? A table, man. I see. Here it is. It's got a different image for some reason. A table of tables. Click on this. This. Oh no, we want. We can go back to back to the main tables and build this is this is a table of tables which is pretty neat there's a little explanation how to work it here but I, I reworked this so that you can see what they all are and you can sort of just see them from a different from a distance you, you need a fantasy tavern you could scroll in you could see okay that's what this bag is full of maybe you don't like that maybe you're looking for something with walls here's fantasy tavern one Pyramids, tombs, but yeah, I went back and renamed all of these things. I cleaned this table up a little bit because I've been adding to it. So I will sometime this week get around to adding not only that map, but I will actually add another map that I converted a little while ago. If I go back to my work table, not sure if it's here or not, but there is a really cool map that I wanted to share a while ago that I converted. That is an inn. That's the undercrypt that I was farting around with. Goblin layer map. Dogs, NPC cards. 
objects, <clears throat> saved objects. Let's go back here and hit 006. Drop this onto the table. Is this is this is the other one that I'm going to import. I will clear this. Drop this into the middle. It will import this. I'm going to take a drink. We go back to here. I'm going to drop this link here. Oh, this isn't even it. <laughs> what a fail. We'll build this one. This is D&D &D 6. D&D &D map 6. <clears throat> I'll actually put this on there as well. Because I cleaned all this one up. I fixed all the... These things used to say photo bucket and stuff on them. So I fixed all the images so that they're not screwed up. This map is actually back up and running 100%. Great spot for an ambush. Uh, you got some giant that sits up here. Or some Something along those lines. Uh, he's got this gate that he's working on. <laughs> something I missed. Wagon covered supply. And uh, yeah, he's stopping these people from walking down this trail. There, you, you can put some form of obstacle that these people need to overcome. Or your party needs to overcome to get through here. Lightsaber, very cool. Fade to black. Uh, let's do a little dusk. Boom. Lights drop. It gets a little dark and eerie out. Yeah, very cool. It's a neat map. But the one that I actually wanted to show you that I'll show you right now, uh, I'm going to show you because it is called Sand something. Pirate Ship Sand. Six Ship Sand. Clear this out. I will do two versions of this map. I will also be adding. I got quite a few things to update. I'll do videos on each one of these two so that there, you know, people can see what's going on here. But... I'm going to go to Blue Sword Desert, drop this in a spot. Build. I converted this for my Treasure of the Lost Sands game that I was playing. And uh, when we hit the build button, there we go. And I'm going to make this uh, normal light. But what a fantastic, uh, what a fantastic tavern. Somebody, somebody did this or pulled this off of something or built this inside of Tabletop Simulator. I completely 100% stole it. I dropped the sand on the back, cut out all of the water that this uh, this had otherwise rebuilt it so that it would look like uh, it's made from the hulls or the you know the fronts of pirate ships sitting on sand as opposed to being on the water. There's an alternate version to this one called Six Sands Water that somebody else had built, and I scooped that, and uh, I think it's called Six. Six Ships Tavern Water, yeah, so this is it here. Let's quickly show you this one, because this is just like that D&D map, whatever it is. Clear, clear. It's on here. Another fantastic map. Let's drop this on this map. I'll be adding these. To the table so that you guys can actually access them. And then uh, use them in your own one world deals because they're beautiful friggin maps, man. What a cool idea for some kind of pirate adventure. You find this thing floating out in the middle of nowhere. Maybe it's an offshore uh, tavern or something like that, that you can pull your ship up and just hop in here and, you know, have a drink. Maybe it's a, uh, you know, like a pirate's hangout or something like that in, in like Nassau in the Caribbean or some cool place like that. What does this say? Oh, this is like an old Wizards of the Coast map that somebody scooped up. Was not me. It probably blew that out. But this was just the original one that I scooped and got the map. And yeah, fantastic. So there's a water version, sand version. All right, I'm cutting this one done. Stop recording. Peace out.